see, the, the, the bad thing about that is that, like, you know, I knew the Brezies when I was in college, like, and guys looking at guys like you from the outside, you think this guy's in on a rugby scholarship, he's jock, he's the in crowd, he plays for Ireland, good looking big guy and all that. And you kind of assume that these guys are, they're all all right, like. You see, that perception has to stop. And it has to stop now because it's, it just doesn't work that way. You know, a mental health doesn't have a circumstance. Um, and that's the reality in this country. And, and the thing after that speech, I got inundated with emails from men, uh, and men just kind of saying thank you, like dropping their shoulders and saying, finally. Like, we have to wake up and understand that, like, a vast majority of people in this country have experienced this or dealt with it or dealt with loved ones who have, have had depression or anxiety, yet we are still unbelievably shadowed by it. And it just really frustrates me because mm. it's... It ultimately is what caused most of my issues. It wasn't the anxiety and the depression. It was constantly having to hide it and constantly have to make excuses for it. That's what caused most of my like problems. Because you talked about, after that, you went on to talk about, for example, you then became a professional rugby player. Mm -hmm. And like, you, was it your first match you bottled? You, could, you couldn't do it? It was my, it was, I think it was my second or third cap. And I remember being, I said it in the speech, but I remember... I think it was the Wednesday or Thursday, and the thing with depression and anxiety is you always hope it doesn't come on you. It's always in your head, you're like, it's not the idea of the panic attacks, so when is it going to happen? Is it going to happen at a time, i.e. before a, you know, one of your first provincial professional rugby matches? And I remember the Thursday before when the games was in Donnybrook, and anyone who's gone through a severe acute depressive stage or anxiety stage, it's just madness. It's, 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 it's irrelevant, irrational madness goes on your head. And it was strange, I, I made this, and a lot of people were shocked when I said it, I literally wanted to rip the skin off my face, you know, and it sound, that sounds horrific, but yeah. I can't describe it in any other way. And I was physically kind of hitting my head against the wall to try and knock myself out, yeah. so I'd have an excuse not to play the match. And I think as hard as that story is to hear, it's the type of stories you have to tell, especially for people, like, why I'm speaking about this isn't just for people who don't, who have the uh, issues, it's for people who don't, so they can get a vague idea of what it feels like. So they can become much better landing strips for people who, who might turn to them in the future and say, listen, I'm not feeling great, or yeah. I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm depressed. And I think that's the relationship we have to have with depression and anxiety. It has to be normalized. It's, not, it's, it's so normal. It's probably the most normal thing in this country, yet it's the most disguised thing. And it's really frustrating, and I don't get it. And I yeah. think people like myself and Conor Cusack are trying to speak out about it, and we're being given platforms. And I've been doing that speech for, for, for a year and a half, yeah, but yeah. we've never been given a platform to do it. And Love in Dublin said, listen, I know there's a couple of chefs and you know, entrepreneurs on the stage, but I think this might, this might work. So they gave us the platform to do it, and it erupted. Because people, as I said, is, it's just been this tension around it, this elastic band pulled back over years that's been allowed to be built up around mental health, and now it's been released. And people are looking And you for know help. what I think was important about it as well, Brezzy, was that a lot of people say, oh yeah, you know, I, I, I had my problems. And I think a lot of people, their perception of you would have been, he had some problems when he was a teenager, right? But like, you were pretty brutal about it. Like you talked about, after that, you talked about basically, you used the word breakdown, which is not, a, a, it's quite a taboo word for people to use. You basically, you were in London and you said that event, basically what you have is a breakdown, yeah? Yeah, and I think people use the word breakdown, you know, they'd be stressed and murky when I'm having a breakdown, oh, it's terrible. Breakdown, uh, when I say I had a breakdown, like, I slept in a park for two nights. I, I couldn't, I remember uh, vividly being able to see London, and I was in Hampstead Heath, which is about eight miles outside London. And I was able to see the city, and I was able to see the, the, the gap between me and the city, and that was why I was there. And I was thinking, this is... And the problem with, with something like that is you, you, your biggest fear is that that will never go away. And that's what freaks you out, because you're going, gee, this, this is a break. This is me back, for the rest like, of my life. Yeah. I'm in trouble. And a lot of people go through that. But in a vast majority of cases, and in most cases, it always passes. And, and the, one of the, the best words of advice I got with panic attacks, they've never killed anyone. They don't kill people. They're terrifying, but they don't kill yeah. people. You know, and with, with depression, you go through acute phases of it where you, you can't function. You just can't function. You can't get out of bed. You can't, you can't look loved ones in the eye. You know, that's the hardest part because what happens then is guilt gets thrown on top of it because you go, I shouldn't feel like this. There's no reason to feel I have no yeah. reason to feel You've like no that. You've no why on it at all, no? Nothing. And, and that's, you know, that's the thing about it. And that's, that, it's, 
it, that's what makes it worse sometimes because, you know, when someone comes up to you and goes, what have you got to feel depressed about? And you go, I know. And that makes it worse because you just, all of a sudden, it's that kind of compounding guilt. And you start thinking about yourself. And then you start hating yourself because you feel like that. And that's the vicious circle of depression. Yeah, yeah.